Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another example video on a beautiful channel on this beautiful evening right here. So what we're going to do today is we're going to make a new file and we're going to make a class in that file. Now, to do this, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go into header files and create a... Actually, you can we can do this. Since this is our... We will... This is our... What do you call it? A new, new class. This is our example project. You know, we have a bunch of CPP files and stuff. We can just create our class in a, in another folder, so we have stuff right there. Uh, so we'll make a dynamic array today. So we'll make a dynamic pointer pointer array. But we'll just call it the array, just like that. And we'll say virtual destructor, no base class, and just straight up create the D array right there. Now the CPP file for it comes down here. We'll just put it there as well, um, so we can reuse this later. Now we have our CPP file and our header file. So what I usually do is I take my header file and put it to the right, uh, where I can easily access it, and uh, my CPP file right here. And this is my main file in this case. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to include this new class that I created, .h. This is how you include your own files, and uh, that means that we can use everything in here. Pragma once is a thing that is called a preprocessor directive. Now, this is different depending on uh, which, whoops, I just closed that down, which compiler you're using. So, what you could do instead of just pragma once, all you need it in is uh, the uh, H file, the header file. Uh, just so you know, don't do that in the CPP file. The header file is the one that gets included and everything else is linked through this H file. Um, so, uh, but pragma once is for Visual Studio. So what you can do instead, if you don't have Visual Studio, is do this. Uh, if, if and if, dr, you can name this whatever you want. Uh, this is the name that I'm giving. As the the name that I'm giving. Excuse me. As long as it's the same down here. But usually the standard is that you take the file name, you put it in capitals, and the dot becomes a underscore, and you just here you say. Now what this tells the computer or the compiler is that if this file is included multiple times, make sure we only define this once. If we if it's not defined, then define it and end the if statement. That's what this means. Now if we define it several times, there's going to be a uh, like two variables with the same name. There's going to be an issue. So that's why you use this. Now pragma once, like I said, you can use that if you want, or you can use this. It doesn't really matter. So go ahead and do that, and then we'll do. Actually, I like my private on the top here. So we have a class now in a separate file and we have included in here. So we could make a D array array right now, but it doesn't do anything obviously. So we're gonna have to fix that. We need a capacity, we need a number of elements, and we need a, uh, a what will this be? This will be a container for, let's say integers, integers as usual. Or we could actually make sure that this is a, oh, whoops, include string. Oh my god, I can't type today. I'm sorry, it's late. String. Anyhow, what this does is, if it's included in here, by the way, I need to tell you this. If it's included in an H or header file, like this, any, any library, you don't have to include it everywhere else. It will be included through this include, right? It will be like chained through that, so you don't have to include it everywhere. If I include it, I stream in here, in the DRA H file, um, we wouldn't have to include it up here in main. So uh, just remember that. And it's good. It's good to do it this way. If you have a string included here as well, you should remove it if you include it in the header file for this uh, this other class. So remember that, and we'll just make a string um, array pointer pointer of course and then we'll just go ahead and and do this now it, because we have a header file and a CPP file here uh, we don't have to define all our STD excuse me we don't have to define all our functions and all our stuff uh, in the header file itself we can do that up here so that's a good thing now we need a void expand we need a void init oh initialize should be top 
Not that it really matters. But I'm really anal like that. So we have this here. Now public, we're going to have a void add and then a string element. Um, just like that. STD, again, sorry. And then we're going to have a STD string get at, just like that. Uh, and then constant. And we will actually keep it like that. Yep. And of course, of course, of course, int. Um, we can make a const integer reference get number of elements const just like that we can make this I'll show you this as well this is something called inline I usually do this for my get getters and setters so inline um, it just is a little more effective at least from what I've learned uh, if you have smaller functions like this you can just define them in here in the header file and just call it inline because you're telling the computer that you're actually doing this I think that's what it meant. I don't, I'm not really sure. You could Google that. But I just know it's a little more efficient for smaller functions. So it will just return this um, number of elements just like that. Now don't quote me on that, okay? But uh, check that out. I'm sure you can find something on it. Um, let's see. So here we have our mem functions. And these are constructors and stuff. Okay, so... We could, again, because we're pro now, we could use the um, the initialization list here. Remember initialization list? Cap is 10. Cap 10. We have number of 0. And array new string string uh, cap. I think you could do that. Or maybe, maybe I don't remember really how to do that right now. So we'll just do it here this array equal new string cap maybe I did it wrong let's try that out huh did that work oh it worked okay never mind I, I just forget I'm sorry about that anyway that's the member initialization list so we don't really have to do anything in here itself uh, here we have to do the delete action so Make a for loop of elements, and then this r dot i, just like that, and then we delete the whole thing. Again, uh, if you haven't seen how to create these pointer pointer arrays and arrays uh, or dynamic arrays, go ahead and watch my older like uh, maybe example forty around there somewhere uh, videos, and you'll you'll learn. It's really good to know. So, uh, okay, there we go. That's finished. Now we have our member functions. So, uh, let's do void and initialize. Now you have to do this if you have a separate CPP file, right? Now, this just tells us that we're trying to define the initialize function, which is in this class. If we didn't, we would be trying to find, the computer tries to find an initialize function that or it creates an initialize function, general function, not a member function for the class. So we have to specify that we're defining the member function here. Just like that. Int from, excuse me, we need an int from. Just like that. And then a for loop will go from to cap. And we'll just say this uh, array. Actually, we don't really need the initialize for the versions we're actually making now, but we'll still we'll still put it in here. It's it's good to have. Um, then we have expand. Um, expand. And now the expand is the important part, right? So we have our steps. So cap, we double it. Then we create a temporary array. Um, Temporary string pointer cap with the new size. Then we're going to copy stuff over with number of elements. And we're going to go temp equals 
new std string array array position i the referenced so we'll copy that and create a new one we have that and then we're going to delete the old one so all we have to do is actually delete up to number of elements just like that and then we'll delete the actual pointer array I know this is kind of tedious because we've done this before but this is like just for uh, recap purposes I guess you could call it I'm sorry I'm a little tired today my voice is probably a little low but uh, I'll do my best here so then we deleted the old array and the, the final step is to actually just point the old array's pointer to the temporary uh, to what the temporary is pointing to the dynamic array so there we go and we don't have to initialize or anything we'll just keep working with the number of elements here um, so as long as we did that in here yeah okay so we're fine so we don't really have to use the initialize function actually it doesn't really make sense in our case but we still defined it here in case you want to do that other uh, style of, of coding uh, then let's see here add and get at that's what we need let's see Add and get at. Okay. Just like that. And then to add something, it's really simple. If this number of elements larger or equal to this cap, we are going to expand. Otherwise, or no matter what, we'll add something. So this array at position this number of elements plus plus equals new std string um, element just like that bam 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 and then get at if int index okay if index larger or equal to um, let's see, number of elements or index is less than zero, uh, we will throw out of bounds exception. Okay, and then uh, we will return, let's see, this array at uh, index, and of course we will do this, bam. So, we could do is a constant std string. Or wait, you know what? You know, we'll make a string reference because we want to be able to set it as well. No, this is get at. So, we'll make it constant. Then we'll do set at for. Nope, I changed my mind again. I changed my mind again. Let's just do this. Because this means we'll it's like for that operator to you access it, you can either do something with it or not. It doesn't really matter. So yeah, we'll keep it like this. This is not really good. You want to overload that operator, which I will show you in a in a few videos here. Um but yeah, we're getting pretty deep into this, so I should show you that pretty soon now. Um but this is it. This is it. That is it. Now we have our dynamic array for strings. Now let's see, we created it here. Now we can say array dot add uh, bob. Okay. And then we'll make a for loop which goes to array dot get number of elements. And then we'll say array dot get at i. Like that. We'll just see if this crashes or not. I hope not. Please don't. Okay, so print out Bob. Good job, good job. Now let's see if we can copy over the the uh, what do you call it? This memory leak check. So hopefully we don't have any memory leaks. Let's see. All you have to do is just close it and see. Nope, no memory leaks. So we're fine. Now we'll add a bunch of Bobs, more than ten Bobs, and just see if it expands. 
Yep, it expanded, everything's fine, no memory leaks. So that's how you make a dynamic pointer-pointer array in a separate file like this. And then you don't have to define everything in here. You have your separate CPP file where you define all your functions and then you include your header file in here. You include your header file for the class in the CPP file for the class and the main file. So this CPP file knows what function prototypes there are and what header or what uh, member functions there are, or member variables, sorry. And then you can define them here and include everything at once in here. Okay, so that's about it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. It's been a while since I made a video, about a day. I had to travel a little bit, so. But yeah, thanks, take care, thanks for the support, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.